Yo, this one yeah, simply yeah, sweet, you know, for the streets, then. Yo, blaze the track. Yo, back at school, play the fool, but I was gifted. Now I'm speaking flows, keeping scholars of living. Yeah, I spit a verse, I'm thinking rich, you know. Cats be talking mad, smack the dog, I'm like subliminal. Uh, I'm immigrated to the southeast side, I'm contemplating. Then my lyrical conscience glide, but yo, it's not where you're from, it's where you're at. I'm sitting on my doorstep, yo, ain't fuck up. I love the style, your whole aura is just characteristic. Hey guys, this is your is Real Sweat. Today we have a special guest in the house, martial artist Sam. Let's go on and meet him. Hey guys, welcome to Real Sweat. My name is Cindy. Today we have a special guest in the house, Sam, also known as Big Chocolate. Woo, woo. Now, I'm going to go ahead and ask you a few questions that where the audience can get to know a little bit about you okay. and what you're all about. Okay? So Sam, let me ask you the first question. What motivated you to become an MMA fighter? Um, really what motivated me to fight was a terrible breakup. I mean, no, actually, I got into jiu-jitsu. Um, First, after playing college football, I went through a bad breakup, which kind of motivated me to get, you know, some uh, energy out. And I was offered money to go fight, and I took it, and the rest is kind of history. Okay, everything else was history. <laughs> now, let me ask you, this nice suit you have on, what is it made out of? Why so white as well? This is a kimono. It's funny that you asked that question. That was really good that you asked uh, why white. Um, in most traditional jiu-jitsu academies, or judo academies, which jiu-jitsu derived from, white is a color that was the most standard that everyone had to wear. That's kind of like a uniform policy. A lot of schools nowadays, they're a little bit more lax on what color you wear, but some schools will only allow you to wear white geese. Gotcha. And what material is this? I see that it's not the same from the bottom and the top. Right. right. Yeah, it's a little bit thicker material, um, a little bit lighter than a judo gi, but a little thicker than, say, a karate gi, because you're grabbing and gripping a lot of the top portion, the bottom portion, etc. So um, it has to be able to not rip in the middle of a match or training. Ah, porque parece faja. Us women use the faja, you know, and it looks pretty tight on you. Sí, porque yo estoy gordo. Hablo un poquito de español, pero cuando usted habla conmigo, habla despacio. Habla despacio. Despacio. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Well, let me ask you this. So far, what have you enjoyed? You know, the MMA part of it, and what's the least part you have enjoyed? Um, ¿Qué te ha gustado y qué no te ha gustado? Um, pero no me gusta la lucha. Yo no gosto de lucha porque yo no quiero problema con nunca personas. Mm -hmm. Pero I like um, the camaraderie of it. I like um, making a game plan and going out there and accomplishing what you set out. Tener esa meta, that sí. goal. Sí. Yep. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, awesome, awesome. And when you guys fight, do you guys wear some sort of protective wear on your foot? Or is oh, it barefoot? Man, you had to look at my toes. Oh, well, my toes. The, the thing is, is um, you want to fight usually barefoot, um, especially in training barefoot as well. There are some cases where people will put on wrestling shoes. Now, there's an up and down side. The reason why you don't want to have shoes on on the mat is primarily sanitary reasons. There's a lot of things that you may walk on before you walk on a clean mat, and you don't want to be rubbing your face or your body on that. Makes sense. Yeah, and um, you know, you have a lot of wrestlers or traditional American wrestlers that do have, pero no hablo de lutadores, de wrestling, not wrestling uh, fighters, but um, amateur okay. wrestlers. They'll do that to protect their feet, to have a little bit uh, of things to push off of, to attack. But in jiu-jitsu, it can be dangerous because there's a lot of foot locks, so it gives me leverage to grab something and to submit it. Oh, makes sense, makes sense. Now, um, in the next few years, where do you see yourself? What do you feel that you might accomplish? And is there any other goals? That you want to accomplish? Well, um, I'm looking at this year in November. Hopefully, I can win a world championship. That's the only thing that I haven't um, won yet. I've taken a very long break from mixed martial arts. Maybe not fight there again, but if I can get a world championship in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, then I can start establishing possibly a school. Um, 
and see where it goes from there. But I do know that I want to be helping people uh, in the near future, wherever I am. Oh, so sweet. Now, let me ask you this. ¿Tienes una novia? Queremos saber si tiene una novia. Ahora no tengo novia. Yo tengo una esposa, pero ella no está ahí ahora. Uh, ah. Sí, pero... Ah, no sé. Sí. Solamente ahí, en Estados Unidos, uh, mi esposa en Brasil. Pero... Ah, tu esposa. Eh, sí, pero... Eh, Ah, mucho, <laughs> mucho loco, <but> sí. <laughs> Much in love, he has his daughter. Sí. <laughs> Now, can you show me a little bit of your moves, what it's all about? Be gentle with me because, God forbid, I break a nail. Uh, no, no, we can go, no problem. You won't get hurt. <laughs> it's a gentle art. <laughs> Let's do this. Hi, my name is Deja, and today you're watching Real Sweat. We are here at the Sunshine Inventational Sprint Series 2016, where athletes from all over the world come to get some races up under their belts leading up to the 2016 Olympics in Rio. So how about we take a look and see what they have here at today's event. Yeah, yeah, my name is Jeff Dimps. Shout out to Real Sweat. Real Sweat. My name is Alexis Love. Shout out to Real Sweat. Hey, I'm Sam McCoy. And you guys are watching Real Sweat. Hey, guys. So Sam's going to show me a few moves, um, especially for us women. We need a little bit of defense in our lives. So, Sam, show me what to do. Just remember, I cannot break a nail. All right. So really quick, guys. Most important thing is let's just start from the beginning. If you're standing up and you have your hands in front of your face, This is protecting your face. That you're dangerous. Good. So right, what she's doing right now, she's guarding her face. This is considered her guard when she's standing up. In jujitsu, it's primarily a ground fighting art. So the, your guard is a little bit different. So she's gonna go ahead and lay down for a second. In jujitsu, her guard is gonna be her legs here. The only difference is her appendages are much longer. Okay? Now, especially for women here. It may seem like a sort of a, um, we'll move around a little bit here so you can see a little bit better. It may seem a little bit more like an awkward position because the person or your opponent will be in between your legs. So what she's gonna do is she's gonna wrap her legs around my waist and this is considered a closed guard. The reason why this is such a good uh, position for women to learn is because if you are getting assaulted or if anything happens where you have these sick people, sick individuals out there that wanna do harm to you, They're going to try to make themselves go in between your legs and do whatever they're going to try to do from there. The good thing about jiu-jitsu is once they get in this position, this is exactly where you want them to be, and uh, we'll make sure that they never do what they're trying to do again. So if I'm here with her, I'm going to make sure that I have Miss Cindy and I'm going to put my hands, let's say for instance, around her neck like I'm going to choke her here. Miss Cindy is going to perform what's called a kimura, and I'm going to help walk her through it. So if I'm here and I'm trying to choke her, she's going to keep her guard closed, she's going to basically take my hands off her neck by swimming her arms inside out and bringing her knees to her chest. That makes me drop my weight forward. Now Miss Cindy's gonna grab her left hand toward my wrist. She's gonna get a nice good grip. From here, she is gonna open her guard briefly and put her feet on the ground. She's gonna sit up and reach over and grab over my arm and grab her own wrist. So she has a pretty good lock on my wrist. She's gonna move her hips now back into my arm, wrapping her legs up again And from here, she's going to put her elbow down as my hand goes back towards my head, and she's going to face me as she does it. That creates a lot of pressure on my shoulder, and if I don't tap, my shoulder explodes. It's going to be very hard to assault her with one arm. Let's just say that we're in this position with you, Miss Cindy, and you wrap your legs up again. And I come here and I grab around your throat here, and you want these arms off your hands, uh, off your neck again. You swim out, bring your knees to your chest, my knees hit the ground. You're going to set up the same kimura by grabbing my wrist with your left hand, your feet go on the ground. You're going to sit up just like you're reaching up for the kimura. But in this instance, I'm going to posture up. Maybe I know what's coming. Maybe I feel a little awkward in this position and I want to get away. But since this person is going to try to assault us, he's not going to get away very easily. So Miss Cindy's going to place her foot on the ground here. She's going to put her right hand behind my tricep. Her left hand comes back behind her perfectly just like that. 
and she's gonna explode through my chest as hard as she can, like she's trying to stand up through me. She'll finish in what's called a mounted position. Now Miss Cindy has the upper hand. She can cross her toes back behind her. She can put her hands nice and wide and control me here. Or if she really wants to be nasty, she can secure me and start to punch whatever she has to do from here until she's ready to get out or exact uh, whatever type of revenge that she wants from me. One more thing, let's go ahead and put Miss Cindy on her bottom again. And from this guard position, if you feel like you're maybe you're not as strong or you're not as versed, or you can't think about it while all the chaos is going on, Miss Cindy's just gonna control me from this position. She's gonna close her guard. And from here, she's gonna reach up and grab over my, my shoulder, and she's gonna grab under with her other hand and grab me as tight as she can, and she's gonna keep her ear right next to my ear. So if I'm trying to assault her or punch or do whatever I can, she has time to scream, ask for help. She's securing me so I'm not able to do much to her. Uh, you're pretty strong, Miss Cindy. You can let me know. <laughs> so basically, that's a little bit of how Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, or at least basics of how Brazilian Jiu Jitsu can work for you. One last thing that's very important in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu a lot of times we're standing up, we're facing each other, whether you're getting pushed from behind, which is another technique, or if someone's pushing you from the front. You can't fight very well if you fall and you get hurt, so we're going to show you a proper way how to fall. This is called a break fall. So, Miss Cindy's facing me here. And let's just say I end up pushing her. She's gonna drop down and squat. So I'm pushing her, she's gonna squat as low as she can. Go ahead and squat down to Cindy. And she's gonna fall back to her butt, but she's gonna tuck her chin and slap the mat. This is called a break fall. So right now, if I'm in front of her, she has her appendages. If she rolls over to her side, she can kick. She can protect her face with her other hand or whatever she may need to do from here. If she wants to stand up, she's gonna place this foot on the ground. She's gonna place her left hand back behind her and she's just gonna stand up by kicking this leg through. Now she's ready to stand up, run, fight, whatever she has to do from there. So those are just some basic things that could probably help you Miss Cindy with Wow, self interesting. <laughs> Girls, highly recommend Sam. Ah, it's my pleasure. Thank you for watching Real Sweat. My name is Cindy. Sam, thank you once again. You know it's not a workout unless you break a real sweat. Just like Sam is. Yeah, I'm sweating. Hey guys, it's Sam McCoy here. I want to thank Real Sweat, Miss Cindy. I want to thank Udamsha Fight Gear for sponsoring me. I want to thank Mark Ford for this beautiful facility that he has here. Um, John Mahoney, my strength and conditioning coach, American Top Team Deerfield Beach, and the Schlosser Brothers. Thank you guys for watching me. Thank you for having me. Real Sweat.